Although DNA molecules contain the genetic information that is needed to build proteins, the DNA molecules themselves are not used directly in protein synthesis and that's because we want to actually prevent damage to the DNA molecules. And so what we do is, in a process known as transcription, we synthesize RNA molecules from DNA molecules. And what these RNA molecules are, they're copies of specific segments of the DNA molecule and these segments usually contain important genes. So before we can synthesize proteins, RNA molecules must be synthesized from DNA molecules in a process known as transcription. And just like the process of DNA replication involves this protein known as DNA polymerase that catalyzes the formation of a phosphodiester bond in the process of transcription, when we form the RNA from the DNA, there is a molecule, a protein known as RNA polymerase that catalyzes the formation of the phosphodiester bond. So RNA polymerase catalyzes the initiation and the elongation of that RNA polynucleotide chain. And to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So in the diagram, in this chemical equation, we basically describe how this reaction takes place and what RNA polymerase does. So let's suppose we have, a, an, uh, we have an RNA chain and we're extending that RNA chain, so we're building our RNA molecule. Now, so far in our RNA molecule, we have n number of nucleotides. And let's suppose we want to add one more nucleotide. We want to add one more ribonucleoside triphosphate. Now, what RNA polymerase does, and we'll discuss this in much more detail in just a moment, what RNA polymerase does is it essentially attaches the ribonucleoside triphosphate onto the RNA molecule to form an RNA molecule that is extended by one nucleotide. So here we have N number of ribonucleoside triphosphates, but here we have N plus one. And in the process, we build this phosphodiester bond between the ribonucleoside triphosphate and the RNA chain, and we release a single pyrophosphate molecule. So PP stands for pyrophosphate. And in fact, it's the breakdown of the pyrophosphate that drives this transcription reaction forward, as we'll discuss in much more detail when we'll discuss the process of transcription. So this is the general equation that describes RNA polymerase. Now, to actually work, what does RNA polymerase actually need? Well, it needs three different things. It basically needs the building blocks, the ribonucleoside triphosphates, and there are four different types. So we have adenosine 5-triphosphate, we have guanosine 5-triphosphate, we have cytidine 5-prime triphosphate, and we have uridine 5 prime triphosphate and these building blocks are needed to actually synthesize and, uh, and elongate that polynucleotide chain. Now, number two, it actually needs a pre-existing DNA template molecule. So usually we're dealing with a double-stranded DNA molecule and a double-stranded DNA molecule works the best. But in some cases, we can also use single-stranded DNA molecules as templates. Now, why do we need a template molecule? Well, we need the DNA template to basically copy that genetic information. And it's the template, that DNA template, that is used to basically bring those complementary bases to that elongated polynucleotide chain. So all those single-stranded DNA molecules work, double-stranded DNA molecules are more effective and more common as templates. So RNA polymerase uses this DNA template to basically build a polynucleotide chain that contains complementary bases, as we'll see in just a moment. And finally, Inside the RNA polymerase molecule at the center, there is a pocket that can fit a divalent metal atom. Now, what is a divalent metal atom? Well, it's a metal atom that can gain a positive charge, a charge of positive two, so we can lose two electrons and gain a positive charge of two. 
and two types of atoms that work in this particular case are magnesium, so Mg, and manganese, Mn. And the reason we need this metal atom is because it acts as a cofactor. It increases the efficiency of this enzyme's activity. Now, let's take a look at the following diagram that basically describes in detail how that bond is formed. And notice, this phosphodiester bond is formed in a very similar way to how the phosphodiester bond is formed when DNA polymerase replicates that DNA molecule. So, in this particular case, this is our DNA template that the RNA polymerase molecule is actually using. So this is the 3 end and this is the 5 end. Now what our RNA polymerase does is it binds onto that DNA molecule and it reads the DNA template from the 3 to the 5 end and that means it builds it from the 5 to 3 end. So this is the RNA chain that the RNA polymerase already built. So let's imagine that inside this chain, we have N number of nucleotides, and this is the N plus one nucleotide that is being added onto that growing RNA chain. So what the RNA polymerase does is it essentially hovers around this section and it brings that complementary ribonucleoside triphosphate which is complementary to this base that is found on the DNA template. Now how do we know when it's complementary? Well basically when the bonding is just perfect this molecule will stay in this location for long enough for this bond to actually take place. So it will stay long enough for the bond to form. And the way that the bond forms is, so we can label these carbon atoms as carbon atom one, carbon atom two, carbon atom three, carbon atom four, and carbon atom five on this sugar molecule. And we have the three prime hydroxyl group acts as a nucleophile and attacks this innermost phosphorus atom of this incoming nucleoside triphosphate and it forms a covalent bond between the oxygen and this phosphorus. Now eventually this H atom is removed and this pyrophosphate molecule is kicked off. And so in the process, when we form the phosphodiester bond and we form this a polynucleotide chain, we essentially release a single pyrophosphate molecule. And as we'll see in a future lecture, the hydrolysis of the pyrophosphate molecule essentially drives this reaction forward. So RNA polymerase catalyzes the formation of the phosphodiester bond. It brings the complementary nucleoside triphosphate, this nucleoside that is complementary to this base, into the mixture. And then our RNA polymerase holds this in place and it catalyzes the formation of this bond as shown in the following diagram. And the pyrophosphate is released as a result. Now, as I mentioned before, the RNA polymerase reads the DNA template from the 3 to 5 end, but it synthesizes that polynucleotide chain in the 5 to 3 end. And this is the same exact method that DNA polymerase uses. Remember, DNA polymerase also reads that DNA template from the 3 to 5 end, and it synthesizes that DNA molecule from the 5 to 3 in the same way that RNA polymerase does. Now the difference between RNA polymerase and DNA polymerase is in RNA polymerase notice we do not need a primer sequence to actually initiate the process. So in DNA polymerase we said that DNA polymerase requires that primer sequence but RNA polymerase does not. Now, unlike DNA polymerase, which has the endonuclease activity, has the ability to essentially correct the mistakes it makes, RNA polymerase cannot correct the mistakes it makes. So if it incorrectly pairs up two bases, it will not be able to correct that mistake. And that means uh, RNA polymerase makes many more mistakes as compared to DNA polymerase, which makes less mistakes. 
So this is the RNA polymerase molecule that essentially is involved in forming that RNA molecule during the process of transcription. When we essentially copy the code found in the DNA and form these RNA molecules, for example, transfer RNA molecules, messenger RNA molecules, and ribosomal RNA molecules. Now, the last thing I'd like to mention is in E. coli cells, so in prokaryotic cells, for example, bacterial cells, a single RNA polymerase forms all the different types of RNA molecules, the mRNA, tRNA, and RNA. But in our own cells, in human cells, we have three different, uh, we have three different RNA polymerases, as we'll discuss in a future lecture, and each one of these RNA polymerases actually synthesizes a specific type of RNA molecule.